Good day everyone, Scooter here at Granville Guitars in St. Petersburg, Florida. I just want to make a little quick uh, cautionary tale video for anyone out there uh, being uh, that this is a repair shop. This is mostly geared towards other repair personnel as a sort of a cautionary tale, but if you are an enthusiast of vintage tube guitar amplifiers, you will at the very least find this uh, enlightening. Uh, this is uh, a black face uh, basement amplifier that I have worked on in my shop before for a customer of mine. Uh, given it a clean bill of health at least once before. Uh, typically when these amps come in, I replace these screen grid resistors. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can see where it is that I'm talking about. Let's go to the one that's not messed up right now. Okay, this is the one that's not next to the power transformer. It has seen quite a bit of heat, and you'll see why here in a second. I'm going to replace it as well. Uh, the, the times that this had come in here previously, I did not replace the screen grid resistors because they are metal oxides. Uh, I felt like they were in good shape and installed well enough uh, by whoever did it before, so I left them alone. No big deal. Well, he'd been complaining of power fluctuation problems, and this time when he brought it in, I popped it open and saw this. This is the other screen grid resistor uh, on the other power tube. Let me situate myself here just a bit so the tripod doesn't fall off. Now, if you look closely, you can see I've desoldered one side already up. Uh, it's the right side that you can see there. This end right here. I've already desoldered it. And uh, I went to desolder the other end. Let me get up here so you can see it. I went to, I, I pulled it clear, and I went to desolder the other end and noticed, look, right here. When this was installed, this screen grid resistor that goes directly here to this pin, whoever installed it melted through the wiring for the B plus at pin 3. So there's 400 some odd volts shorted to the wrong pin right there and it's shorted clean through the insulation. Not sure you can see that clearly on the video but that leg of that resistor shorted clean through there and I did not see that. Uh, this, re resi this resistor was installed right here like this and he pressed it down which you don't need to do. I, I, I put them up in the air and that's typically where you're going to see them is up here. Um, you know, you want to get them away from the chassis. Uh, but this one was installed down low and to the detriment of this amplifier. You can see here, like I said, look at that. It burned when he installed this thing right here. And he didn't see it either, and neither did I. It, it, it Sometimes this happens. But the lesson to be learned here, boys and girls, is test your resistances, your correct resistances on everything. Not just from here to here. Or, or here to here rather, but test it on through the amplifier. Make sure that this amplifier is giving you the resistance, or this uh, resistor rather, is giving you the resistances that you need inside the circuit. Make sure you, you check all that stuff. Because had he checked it, he probably would have found this short here. Um, guy had been going through power tubes, no, no need to wonder why, because there it is. There was a dead short between pin 3 and pin 4 here. Um, which I'm assuming caused this to burn up. This 470 ohm resistor now has about 50 ohms. So it was very near to uh, causing a, a nice fire. You can see this is not this is a metal oxide. This thing will put up with a lot of abuse, uh, but not that much. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to clean all this up. I'm going to cut this wire back beyond the damage and reinstall it. And we're going to install some, some nice little five waters here. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with our friend the uh, Blackface Basement Head. And you can see that I have uh, completed the work here. Let's get this turned around. There we go. Uh, there was the non-offending power tube socket. And I've replaced that screen grid with our good friend the Zycon 5 watt 470 ohm. And you can see that it's up off of the chassis away from wires and such. Uh, give it nice airflow around it for heat dispersion. I left the swamping resistors, the 1.5Ks, in place. They look nice and clean. They test fine. Uh, 
so I left those in place. Here's the one where all of the mess was. Whoops! <laughs> I hate when that happens. Uh, let's put this forward just a little bit. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can see. Um, you can see where I had to clip uh, the wire to uh, the B plus right here. This brown wire. I had to get a little creative with my wire run here because there was just barely enough wire to do it with. Um, and you can see where I've resoldered there underneath. Uh, this raises another point that I'd like to uh, bring up. Uh, you know, everybody has different ways of doing things. Um, when I am soldering to and resoldering on an old amplifier, I like to remove all old solder. I like to clean my connections really good. I use uh, lighter fluid. You can use a bunch of different things. You could use isopropyl alcohol, 90%. Uh, you could use, you know, any good cleaner, but I like to make sure this is nice and clean before I then solder it with a bunch of new solder. Uh, I do not use old solder in any way at any time, um, unless it's a truly collectible vintage amp and you want to, you know, retain a solder joint or, you know, a guitar is a completely different animal when you don't want to disturb vintage solder joints, etc. So, anyway... That's about where I want that thing. Um, you know, and on a, a solder joint like this ground solder joint right here, those are nearly impossible to get loose. <laughs> so in certain cases, uh, not a big deal. But I like to replace solder on old connections um, of this sort. Uh, and now these uh, filament wires are going to, of course, get uh, moved back into their original positions up over top now that we can, uh, we can do that. But uh, yeah, here's our good friend, the uh, blackface Fender Baseman with blown screen grids. And uh, the, the moral here again, boys and girls, is test everything. Test, test, test. Look at all your connections. Look at any wires nearby to make sure you haven't melted through insulation anywhere. Uh, get inside there and inspect everything in the general area. Uh, and this is an open letter to myself as much as anybody else because... I had worked on this amp previously, and I, not, I did not see that problem with the B-plus short to pin 4. Um, it's amazing the amp worked, but it did. And it worked really well, uh, but it was a time bomb waiting to go off, and it went. <laughs> so anyway, that's it for today. Uh, just bringing you up to date on the end of this particular repair. I'm going to put the tubes back in, which have all tested fine in another amplifier, and also in my tube testers. And uh, I'm going to power it up, and uh, we're going to enjoy it for a little while. I might tack a little video of that on the end of this, but at any rate. Uh, if there's anything I can do for you here, if you have any questions about anything we do here at Granville Guitars, seek us out on the web at www.granvilleguitars.com. Uh, you can find us also on Facebook and Instagram. And also check out our blog over on WordPress, A View from the Granville Bench. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.